Are you tired of this? <laughs> I'm not normally one to question the frog god himself, but he made a huge boo-boo in patch 7.22 when he introduced a limit to the number of sentry wards. Much of our current meta can be traced back to this change in a patch that seemingly improved the quality of life for supports in every other way. Unfortunately, in the game of Dota 2, vision is king, and it's extremely hard to ration your sentries during the mid-game against invisible heroes, glimmer capes, shadow blades, and enemy wards. It's extremely easy to find yourself left buying one or two sentries at a time off of cooldown, desperately trying to secure a perimeter around the Roshan pit or high ground while trying to end the game. Meanwhile, we're seeing the pick rates of Ricky, Treant, Techies, and especially Marana skyrocket. Slippery heroes are in because they're out of vision, leaping into trees, pouncing onto high ground, and zipping away from your most coordinated of ganks. Well, luckily for you folks, today we are here to say fuck invisibility and fuck your vision problems. If you're tired of some slippery bullshit hero narrowly escaping over and over and over or just pouring thousands of hard-earned gold coins into wards that just sit there on the map doing no damage until they keel over and die, boy do I have the hero pick for you. Now, I need to preface this guide by saying prepare to get flamed for this pick and this playstyle. Hell, I'll probably get flamed for even suggesting this in a video. But when you're desperate to be more than just a ward-toting meatbag, desperate times call for desperate measures. Today, we're going to be talking about how to play position 5 Zeus and why this has been one of the most successful picks for me in the last month of play. Now, I have no illusions about the efficacy or viability of this guide in a tournament setting, but because most of us are just wallowing away in the uncoordinated mire of public matchmaking, this guide is for you guys. Zeus is a hero that really only does two things well. He poops out damage faster than any other hero in the game, and he provides global true sight. The damage part will, of course, help you carry some games where your cores just aren't doing their job, but... It's the global true sight that makes this one of the most viable pub support heroes, in my opinion, in the current meta. To be honest, these two jobs that Zeus does can be done from really any position between two and five, but I've especially noticed the effectiveness of the position five Zeus because I've also felt the futility of trying to keep vision up on the map while also providing true sight for your teammates as they wildly dive into fights without any vision or reveal of their own. Frankly, playing position five has become incredibly tedious because of the prevalence of invisible heroes and ain't nobody got time for that. You're going to start the game by buying both wards, two tangos, a salve, the courier, and two mangoes. Sometimes you go for a smoke if you need to get specific warding spots down and you're kind of a slow hero. But depending on the matchup, you can change the amount of regen you bring a bit. But for the most part, you're going to just be feeding your core regen when they need it and then bolting the crap out of the opposing core in lane. With your starting mana and two mangoes, you can get six bolts for a total of 750 damage before resistance within the first minute of the game. And because Zeus is an unexpected pick for the offlaners to have to deal with, most people are not playing this as a five, they probably won't have a stick to take advantage of your constant spell casting. So basically use Bolt to bully the offlaner, interrupt his last hits, secure range creeps, and then fall back to pulling the lane if necessary before suiciding to the enemy tower to refill your mana and return with your core's items. If they have blocked one of your camps, simply deward it with Lightning Bolt since you're a strong independent god who don't need no sentries. At level 2 you should take Static Field and at level 3 take Lightning Bolt to further boost your ability to bully in the lane. If the lane is going well and you're able to set up your teammates for kills, continue pressuring and pulling until the runes spawn. Basically you're just playing a regular position 5. You pull, you control the lane, you trade harass when you can, and nothing else is really different aside from you not being able to save your carry. But because of how much damage you do, you probably won't need to do that because the other team should be the ones running from your lane. 
Depending on your lineup, rotating may be easy or hard to do since you don't provide much lockdown like many other supports. But the most important thing is to not force plays with Zeus because you're extremely squishy and easy to kill if you're out of position. Also, if the game does go late, you probably win anyway. So if the snowball isn't happening, then just look to watch your positioning and kind of sit around your cores in important spots near objectives and wait for the action to kick off, trying to leech as much experience as possible. At level six, you can start prompting your team to take fights if they feel strong because of the most broken mechanic in all of Dota. Being able to provide perfect vision of where every enemy is on the map at the same time and full true sight. So as the lanes begin to break down, most of the time there will be a lane that frees up or is abandoned. This is your lane. You should look to max out arc lightning after lightning bolt so you can shove the wave religiously from a safe distance. Buy as many clarities as are necessary and be sure to secure your perimeter by bolting common warding spots. Buy a quelling blade to make dewarding less risky and ensure it only takes one bolt to remove vision. The mid game timing is the part where your team may get a bit upset because Zeus needs some farm to reach his full potential and most people seem to think of position 5 players as nothing more than warding and dying. The cool thing is though, the amount of gold that you save by not having to constantly buy sentries and dust alone will quickly add up to a lot more items than a typical 5 would be able to achieve. If your team is snowballing then by all means fight with them by hanging in the back and using Thunder God's Wrath to initiate fights with perfect vision. The truth is though, even in games where you're owning, the vast majority of pubs, your teammates will not farm aggressively enough to reliably make their own space. And that means that you can take advantage of the map by doing your own de-pushing and staying out of the way of your carry's farming patterns. If you're behind or even, try to ward up a section of the map for your team to farm and fight in, ideally your triangle and the enemy jungle, and then sit behind your most exposed tower and de-push without showing. If you're in this sort of passive game state and no enemy is showing, periodically use Thunder God's Wrath to scout the location of all enemies and readjust your positioning and warding to suit what you see. Remember, even if the game is hard, if you are not being completely run over, you are likely to win because the more time you have to get farm, the easier the game will get. At some point, your team will become strong enough to start playing aggressively, at which point you can continue to shove waves and provide them with vision for fights using Thunder God's Wrath, only showing up if the fight looks like it is a clear victory as long as you are there with your lightning bolt. The nice thing about itemizing on Zeus is that most of your utility and damage comes from just simply existing. So it's okay to walk around with brown boots and wards for the first 10 to 15 minutes of the game. If you're fighting constantly with your team, look to pick up a couple of bracers or early fighting items, but more likely you will find yourself with enough free time to casually get some arcane boots and eventually an aether lens. Some games you can opt for yules instead if you need a bit more survivability, but the mana regeneration from either aether lens or yules is very important. Aghanim Scepter is the most important item on this hero, however, because it gives you two ways to provide global reveal for your team. You always look for ways to pick up components for Ags when you get an injection of gold from team fighting or towers and have bought the necessary wards, smokes, and sentries for your team. A quick note about sentries, just because you have the ability to reveal invisible heroes at will doesn't mean that you should completely forget about sentries. Placing observer sentry combo wards are super important to securing safe map control and watching critical choke points. Once you have Ags, the game becomes much easier to play as you can alternate between using Thunder God's Wrath to scout and to reveal in fights, and then following it up with Nimbus for further vision control. Continue keeping the lanes out and eventually work your way towards Boots of Travel, Refresher Orb, and any defensive items you'll, you or your team may need, whether it's Force, Blink, Aeon Disc, or anything else that you just have to have utility-wise to win teamfights. The truth is, if you're playing the hero well and mining your positioning, you shouldn't need to do too much in the form of defensive itemization, even if the enemy team makes a point of hunting you down, because you should be so far away from most of the fights that you're just not in danger. However, if you find yourself in a scenario where you must show up for a fight and be in the middle of the fray, then these defensive items can make all the difference. As far as talents go, I like to go for the 25 EXP because it nicely pairs with your ability to play alone, at level 15, I usually pick up the damage from Static Field because the movement speed is only really necessary for repositioning in teamfights. 
At 20, definitely go for the Bolt Mini Stun because it's absurdly powerful against these slippery heroes like Slark, Ember, Tinker, Marana, etc. And at 25, Arc Lightning Damage ensures that even Mega Creeps are extremely easy to deal with because you can just clear Creep Waves at will. You can clear regular Creep Waves almost instantly. And if you do find yourself in a fight, the amount of damage you do is super overwhelming to deal with. Finally, let's talk a little bit about Magic Immunity because BKB can definitely be a hassle to deal with at 8 to 10 seconds in duration. But as the duration gets lower and lower, it becomes more of a liability for the carrier to have to manage. Naturally, magic immune heroes like Juggernaut and Lifestealer suffer from the same problem as it's extremely easy to force out their defensive ability early and then blow them up when the immunity fades away. The most important thing to remember is that Zeus is an endurance boxer. Throw a few long range body shots to soften up your opponents and get them uncomfortable in fights then they will make mistakes by either desperately trying to dive you or using defensive abilities too early. So that's about it, guys. Go forth without fear of those pouncing Slarks, those backstabbing Rickies, or those pesky Tinkers, and to all of you people abusing this incredibly annoying invisible meta who are probably now complaining about having position 5 Zeuses in your games, you did this to yourselves. Did you think you could hide from a god?